In this installment, we are going to look at the coefficient of static friction. And the focus here is on static friction. Now, just a review of what we had spoken about in our previous example, our demonstration. What we had seen was that when we had this basket that was at rest, we attached a force probe to it, we gradually increased the force to the point that it broke free and started sliding, and then we slid it, we continued to drag it, and it slid across the surface at constant velocity. What we observed was the force increased to a maximum, and then it broke free, and then it moved at constant velocity with a constant force. So there was this portion here that was stationary from about 1 to 1 1.8 seconds. And what we saw as the force increased, and as the force applied increased, the force of friction increased, and they, until no longer, until the force applied was greater than the force of friction. So we are focused here in this installment on what's happening during this stationary phase. Well, what is occurring in this stationary phase, which is static, so static we want to associate with stationary. And by stationary, we mean that there is no sliding of one material against another. In other words, when we look at the atoms or the molecules in the material, when we look at those relative to each other, they do not slide past each other. So let's take a look at some factors that affect at affect that static friction. So what we see here is a surface, say a tabletop, and this is say our crate, our basket that had the weights in it. Now there is an unevenness to the surface. And that unevenness to the surface exists for both of them and to varying degrees based on the material, what it's made of and how finely it's polished and so forth. But those unevennesses butt up against each other. And if we increase the weight of the top object so that the normal force is larger, those shapes will fit together better. And so what we can see is that as we increase the normal force, the materials will fit together better and it will be more difficult to slide them. So what we can see then is that the force of static friction, these two surfaces being at rest, is going to depend to some degree on how large that normal force is, that force that's squeezing them together. It will also depend on the nature of the surface between them. So it will depend on two things. So we can see then that the force of friction is a function of the force normal and the nature of the material interfaces the material interfaces if we look at this nature of the material interfaces we can define that as a the coefficient of static friction that coefficient of static friction has a symbol mu, mu, a, uh, mu s for mu static, and it is mu, and the same as, it's the same symbol as, say, micrometer, as that same symbol, the Greek letter mu. It is equal to the ratio of the force of friction to the force normal. And if we look at the way this behaves, this, this mu static is a constant. So if I increase the force normal, I must increase the force of friction to maintain the same constant. The force of friction is measured in newtons. Force normal is measured in newtons. Algebraically, they cancel, which means there are no units to coefficient of static friction. Rearranging this equation, we can come to force of friction is mu static times the force normal, and that would be the force of friction static. And this is, of course, a 
linear direct, a linear relationship, and it is also direct. If I double the force normal, I need to double the force friction. Double one, whatever happens to one happens to the other. And this is the coefficient of static friction. Now, it may have occurred to you as we were presenting the above, we may, we may, why, why is it the force normal and not Fg? And this is a very good question. The picture we have above is we have these two materials and really what's causing this to push downward is the force of gravity. It is the weight of the upper object that's pushing down and the normal force that is regenerated backwards that's responding to it, that action-reaction pair, is caused by the force of gravity. So force normal is not something intrinsic. Well, the answer to that question comes if we can look at an inclined plane. If we look at an inclined plane, the force of gravity of the object is in this direction. Now the normal force is defined as, as defined as the force is perpendicular to the interface between them. So that's a force normal. And what it is that causes these two materials to be squished together is, is a force that is perpendicular to the inclined plane. And as we've learned previously, the force of gravity on an inclined plane has two components, the force of gravity perpendicular and the force of gravity parallel. The part of gravity pulling it down the slope is the part of gravity or the component of gravity parallel to the plane. And there is that component that is perpendicular to the plane, which pulls the two materials together. So as we can see in this case, that if we made this inclined plane steeper and steeper and steeper, just like on an inclined plane, the force of gravity, that component that is perpendicular, will decrease in size until we have a vertical wall and that perpendicular is zero. Then all of gravity is pulling it down the plane and there is no part of gravity pulling them together. So it's not the weight of the object that determines the friction. It is the normal force, that part of the force that is counteracting the force squeezing them together. And so that's why it is force normal and not the force of gravity. So let's now uh, determine that value, that mu sub, that mu sub um, s. So when we look at our experiment, we had a maximum, maximum force, we said, of 7.2 newtons. So we have our force of friction, which was 7.2 newtons. And we have a force normal. Now in this case, the force normal this object is, is on the table, so we have the force of gravity and the force normal. They happen to be equal to each other because all of gravity is pulling the two together. So the force normal is the force of gravity. And if I told you this was one kilogram, we'd have one kilogram times 10 would be 10 newtons. So that gives us a mu s of 0.72. And again, the Newtons cancel, so there's no, no dimensions on it. So if we, that's our, how we would get our mu s. If we wanted our uncertainty with the mu, well, we would need to know our percent uncertainty, the, the uncertainty, let me change the color, the uncertainty, the percent uncertainty in mu s, is the percent uncertainty in FF plus the percent uncertainty in FN. Now this uh, force of friction, the 7.2 Newtons, when we looked at it, we said it might be plus or minus 0.25. It could be a little bit higher, maybe 7.25 and maybe down as low as, maybe down as low as 7.25. But we're certainly in that case overstating it. So that percent uncertainty would be 0 0.25 divided by 7.2. And in the force normal, we have, um, let's so suppose the, this one kilogram, if we said it's 1.0 and that would be plus or minus 0 0.1, that would be 10%. 
and we know using 10 gives us about 2%. So overall, we would have 12% uncertainty in the force normal, so 0.12. So using our calculator to find out that percent uncertainty, we have 0.25. divided by 7.2 plus 12, well, 0.12. So that gives us about 15.47%. Uh, so that gives us 15.47%. So to find the absolute uncertainty in the mu s, that is going to be the mu s times the percent uncertainty in mu s. So 0 0.72 times 0 0.1547. So we have our answer times 0.72, which gives us point. 1114 plus or minus 0 0.1114 we can only report one significant digit so our answer would be 0 0.72 plus or minus 0 0.1 and since this is to the 10th place this number can only be to the 10th place so when we report our final value we have mu s is 0 0.7 plus or minus 0 0.1. And so that is our coefficient of static friction that we can determine experimentally.